Hello and welcome back to the Blackstones. We're playing Blades in the Dark and I'm gonna introduce everybody and have them introduce themselves. So we're going around to my left. Whoosh, Philip. All right, my name is Philip. I am playing Paul Blackstone and who's a leech? Mm-hmm, James. I'm James, I am playing Brooks Columbo, who is a, where is it, slide. Slide. Yeah. Hi, I'm Shannon. I'm playing an Acherosian spider. Mm -hmm. My character's and, name is Alex O'Reilly. Alex O'Reilly. And across the table, Lucas. Hello, I'm Lucas. I'm playing <coughs> Demon, the Scovelin Cutter. Yeah. <laughs> Feels good to say it again, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Max. Uh, I'm Max. I'm playing Arvis Claremont, a hound. John. I'm John. I'm playing Cobb, such as the corn, the Akarosi Lurk. That's right. Although John still doesn't have the corn cob pipe, but maybe in future episodes we'll, we'll have it'll, it'll come eventually all right so you guys had a kind of a crazy last mission um, I'm not going to recap it so if you missed that go back and watch episode three but in a nutshell you took some damage you were very stressed out and but you made it not only did you make it you guys got paid paid really well now if you recall Brooks wasn't there he was back at the hideout planning your next heist. so when you guys all made it back to the hideout and got that payday Brooks was shocked because all that coin that you scored, which was a lot of coin, has catapulted the Blackstones to a new level on the streets. A new mm -hmm. level. It also, that last mission, you guys uh, made up for some of your you know, difficult relationships. Um, you, you actually earned prestige and some credit um, with Ulf because you kind of came through. So the Scovelin resistance doesn't actually exist but if it did they would have a little more respect for the Blackstones now so you're you're in good shape um, with with your faction standing so months go by um, some of you spending a significant amount of time in the doctor's office um, stupefied uh, on wondrous drugs to help you heal um, others entertaining your different vices and indulging in them to kind of reduce some of the stress that you've built up from that last very hectic heist. Months have gone by, months. And um, it's been very quiet on the streets, no major shakeups, kind of just business as usual for a lot of the different gangs and factions in the area. Um, you have maintained your business though, and that additional coin has, has helped you to kind of cement and, and firm up some of your business. What is, I'm gonna go around the table, this is totally improvised. What is one thing that each one of you would want to spend a little coin on to kind of improve your standing or improve your your welfare? Phil, pressure's on. Mm. <laughs> I would probably assume expanding our lair, you know, extra turf, and what else do we have? You know, extra turf and warehouses, I think that would be really good. Okay, so maybe you negotiate some additional spaces that uh, maybe you don't completely own a warehouse, but you carve out a nice spot where you pay off guards to make sure that you know your section of the warehouse is secured. Very good. James. Um, working on the main parts of Gary's Deli, the um, our little business run by our man Gary, who we <laughs> kind of, it's kind of our faux money laundering thing, so kind of expanding that and improving that, maybe hiring a couple extra people to work here so the stress is off Gary. So with the amount of money we're now bringing in, it's kind of more believable that this guy can be taking in so much coin. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some renovations, cleaning up the business, Franchise. hiring some of different, yeah. Franchise. Maybe <laughs> even maybe even some delivery, you know, like where you, you, you have like a food truck operation now where sandwiches are getting delivered to different work sites yeah. and stuff. Yeah, Gary so. to go. Yeah, Gary's <laughs> Deli is, is booming. Great, Shannon. Uh, what I think I would probably be doing in these months of downtime was probably using the coin to build relations, so like a diplomatic venture into the region, see who we like and who we want to be allies. Excellent. Now, that brings up an interesting point because there are a lot of factions, a lot of factions. What is maybe a faction or let me say a business interest that you might want to have more involvement in or maybe influence in or connections with. What was the shipping company that we did a job for? 
like the, we had to defend a cargo. Ooh, very early on. Dig into those notes, gang. Was that, that wasn't the, um, that wasn't the gondolier. Was that the Lamplex? We do have a very high standing Weren't with the Lamplex. Yeah, the train? <coughs> the train they, job. Yeah, I thought they were the train Right. Guys. No, we no. had to defend like a, 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 a barge. A ship. Barges as they went down the yeah, canal. The barges that was, that from was the, against the washbucklers. That was against the washbucklers. Yeah. The shifty fuckers? Was it the no. shifties? No. No. I don't think or was so, it no. the gondoliers? I think it was the gondoliers. Or was it, or was it the wongs? The gondoliers. Was it the wongs? I, no, the, no. The, oh, the, the wongs was the one where there was like the demon, and I talked to him, and then there was the demon, uh, and yeah, he blew the place up. Yep. I'm pretty sure it was the gondoliers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty sure. Okay. So maybe up in your standing with the gondoliers. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad thing to, to have a little little sway with uh, the, the people who move things through the canals, or at least some of the people. Yeah. move things through the canals. All right, across the table, um, what is something that you would be doing to, you know, with, with some of your coin? Demon would be improving his relations with the local groups of Scovelins, increasing his influence with them, essentially trying to centralize, like, the groups into one big organization. Okay. Are you army. are you interested in kind of legitimacy, like where you'd want to work with the Scovelin consulate, or are you thinking more like the people of the, the people street? Yeah, of okay. the street. All right. So you kind of in in some of these things, maybe you run across Ulf too, you know, and he he's taken note of you, and and he he recognizes you <coughs> as a fellow patriotic Scovelin. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, good. Max, what's something you might do with your coin? Um, after that last job, I got hurt like pretty bad, so I think I want to invest in like maybe some better equipment, some better armor or weaponry. Mm -hmm. okay. And that comes pretty easily now that you've got some, some connections. Um, and in fact, the Lamp Blacks actually have a guy that does stuff like that. So you spend a little coin and you're able to acquire uh, a little bit of armor. I would definitely be working on my side project, my hidden sheath, so that I may sneak weapons into areas that we may be not allowed to bring weapons into, get an advantage over our opponents. You know what, John? I'm going to say that that clock, you, you complete that clock. You right. now have your Assassin's Creed um, wrist sheath Perfect. weapon. <laughs> All right, so months go by. People indulge their vices. Stress is removed. Um, you you kind of you know mix and mingle on the streets. Each of you kind of doing these separate little projects, and at some point, at some point in the course of your celebration of of your patriotism, you you're at an event that's actually like a soup kitchen for Scovelin refugees, mm -hmm. and and Ulf is there and kind of inspiring people. He makes a speech, and you know everybody everybody appreciates that. And after the speech, he introduces you to a few of the, like, the local Scovelin businessmen who are trying to establish a little more of a foothold in, in the business world, mm -hmm. the legitimate business world. But they need some help because yeah. the docks district itself is, is pretty rough. And it's hard for new entrepreneurs to kind of get a foothold in the docks. Um, and in the course of that, he tells you that there's a young Scovelin kid who, who just recently came over, um, and he's already making a name for himself. And he says that he'll introduce you, and maybe you can do business with this kid. Okay. So about a week later, you guys are hanging out, and I'll say that you're you're actually eating lunch. You're you're downstairs. You're in the deli. You guys are at a table in the corner. That's kind of like your designated table. All the locals like know not to sit there. <laughs> Um, you're you're at the table. You're having some some nice fresh sandwiches made for you, and uh, you see a young, maybe 15 year old kid. He's fair skinned, and he has a blonde mohawk, like a big, tall blonde mohawk. And you see he's he's wearing kind of funny attire. Like he has like very <coughs> slick pants, and like a really nice shirt, almost kind of like the quality that Brooks wears, but but not the quality that Brooks wears, just to be clear. <laughs> but the difference is, is that he, his, his tuxedo jacket, his black tuxedo jacket, the sleeves are torn off. So it's like a tuxedo jacket with no sleeves. <laughs> and this kid walks in and he kind of like runs his hand through his mohawk and he looks around the room 
and he, his eyes drift over to the corner table where you guys are already clocking this kid because he, he is not local. Like you've never seen him in your neighborhood. And you see his eyes stop when he sees Demon. And then he starts walking across the room towards you guys. You, you, are you reaching in for the pistol? Yeah, just keep my hand <laughs> here, okay. that's all. So he walks up to your table, kind of bold. And he, again, slim, you know, maybe 15 years old. And he looks at you and he says, you the Blackstones? Who was asking? Told I could, he's like, um, Elf, Elf told me that, uh, that I might be able to find you here. He goes, Calm down. Calm down, everyone. And in Scovelin, he says to you, he says, you're the demon, aren't you? That I am. He kind of does like a slow bow and reverence. And then he looks back up at you and breaks back into Akarosi. And he says, my name's Chance. I, um, I thought maybe we could talk about a potential collaboration. May I sit? Please. You see he, he reaches towards a chair and pulls it out, sits down, sitting at the table with you guys. He says, um, I'm part of a crew, but nothing like you guys. I mean, we're, we're low level, but uh, we have an opportunity, big opportunity, something that could help us move up. And... Unfortunately, we don't have the resources to pull this off by ourselves. So, I was talking to Ulf, and he recommended you guys. Um, first of all, are you interested, before I go on? I believe we definitely are. Should we take this somewhere a little more private? I wouldn't <laughs> mind. It's your, your neighborhood. Let's just take him upstairs. He says, before we should go, I should just, you know, to be fair, and he opens up his vest, and you see, pistol style, slung, he has two knives. And he says, that's all. I don't carry anything else, but just don't wanted worry. you to it's know. <laughs> he, he says, respect. I don't need weapons to kill you. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've heard. I've heard. He says, uh, shall we then? Okay. So, you guys take him up the back stairs, through the kitchen, up the back stairs. You unlock the seven locks that you have on the... <coughs> yep. Yep. Um, we need to get another one. You bring him up. He, uh, you guys kind of sit down, chairs, maybe a sofa, around a coffee table, and he says, um, as I mentioned, my crew is very small. Um, kind of came together sort of by happenstance. Uh, we were in one of the refugee camps together. Um, and, you know, out of a necessity to survive, we, we kind of banded together. And after we got our papers to, to come into the city, we decided to kind of stick together. Ended up getting work at the docks just as laborers. But, um, you know, I, I would like to say that I, I've, I've got a keen sense for uh, opportunities. And uh, I don't mind risk. So, such as it was, I discovered um, a little operation that was going on in the docks. And I think it's the kind of operation that could be very profitable if we were able to pull off a heist. Well, that's certainly <coughs> not too far off from us. We, that's how we met. We started <laughs> off in the camps. Refugee camps where we kind of all banded together. We're definitely going to need more information on. He's like, what was that 10 years ago? You guys are old. <laughs> I'm like, he. <laughs> I mean, you, you figure you're probably only, you know, six or seven years older than this kid. But as you're looking at him, he, he's definitely a kid, but he just has kind of that, like, ruled weariness to him. Like, where you could tell that he's probably had a pretty rough life. Right. He says, um,. You ever got, uh, he's like, I don't know really how to put this the right way. I'm not the smoothest talker, but uh, you guys ever entangle yourselves with um, the blue coats? Ever have any yes. problems? Yeah. Often. <laughs> yes. A couple times. He says, well, um, yeah, us too. They're always, you know, up, up in our business, even when we're not doing anything. You know, it's like, 
you can't catch a fair break, you know? Yeah. Well, um, there was this blue coat that, that used to work a beat by the docks where we worked. And he was always flush, you know what I mean? Always always had just dapper clothes on, you know, looks like he, he never had to work a hard day in his life. And I figured he was just, you know, collecting taxes, if you will, right. from some of the local operations. Now, we were under his radar. I mean, that's how small we were. We were kids, you know, so. But I got the inclination to follow this guy. And one day I followed him on his entire route, and I saw him pick up just massive collections. Now, he only does this about once a week, but I started to get a, a sense of his pattern, you know, over the course of a few months, watching him, tailing him. And he alternates who he picks up from, and he alternates when he picks up. But I figured out his pattern. Figured out his pattern and when he picks up from who and how much he picks up, roughly. I'm just ballparking it based on how much he's carrying around. Sometimes he would have a couple other guys with him that weren't blue coats. They would be carriers. He'd go in, come out with a fat bag, hand it over to one of them. They'd follow him on the route. I figure they're kind of his security. But no one ever touched this guy because he's a blue coat. Right. Well, then one time, I followed them back. One night, I followed him back. See, they got a drop house in the docks district. We call it the Red House. I don't know who's in there. I don't know who lives in there. I don't know what kind of business they got in there. But I see him and his guys go in there with bags full of coin. And then they come out empty handed. So then it started to occur to me, well, what, what goes on? Where, where's all that coin go? That's where I got this idea. If we could figure out who that's going to and intercept it, we could take all that coin and take that drop. But here's the complication. That place, it's like Fort Knox. Solid stone building. Oh, yeah. And there's always, always guys at <laughs> every door. And, and they're not just walking around with nightsticks. I mean, I don't know who this crew is that is running this, but they don't look like kids. They're all older guys, they're, they're, they're veterans. And they're so bold that they're standing out in front with rifles. Would they be on to something kind of like this? Show them the, that, rifle you've, that rifle you got. Just pull out like the fancy rifle. He said, I never seen one of those. <coughs> but I mean, they're packing. Okay. Do they have any identifying features that look similar to any gangs around here? He says, well, like I said, they're all older. Kind of like the, the blue coat guy. Uh, they're all Akarosi. All of them. Every single one that I've seen. Now, the other thing is, is that I've seen a couple of them sometimes leaving the building and doing a shift change. They all have these gray long coats. Now, I've only been in town for a few months. I even asked around about this because I don't want to give this sweet idea to any other crew. You know what I mean? Yeah. Start asking questions and somebody else steals your idea. The next thing you know, you, list, you, you miss out on an opportunity. That's why I went to Ulf and that's why Ulf sent me to you guys. See, the way I figure it, is if we could get in there somehow and figure out what this operation is. Maybe we could figure out a way to rob that place without getting caught. Yeah. <coughs> that blue coat, he's the only guy, the only blue coat that I've ever seen go in and out of that building. I know his name, Sergeant Morley, but He's the only blue coat that I ever seen going in and out of that building. And I never seen anybody leaving that building with bags of coin or chests or anything. Right? So, whatever so what's the mystery? Is it a vault? If it is, how do we hit it? Or are they getting it out some other way? 
Does the warehouse have any direct connection from the docks? <laughs> or is it off? You know, that's a funny question. I would say it's about uh, 50 meters from the docks. So there's no water going into no, it? No, not that I know of. It's about 50 meters away from the docks. What about doorways, entry, entryways in? One door, you said he went in and out. Is there One other? door, front door, <coughs> that's it. Two-story building. But there's windows. But I always see guys hanging out by the windows with guns. Boy. <coughs> now, I have seen other people go in there. And come out. And it's a mix of people. I don't know what kind of operation they're running in there, but I've seen lots of people go in and out. Yeah. Do they always have bags of coins when they go no. in? The only people going in with bags of coins is Sergeant Morley and his guys. Okay. I've seen regular, you know, <clears throat> civilians, if you will, go in and out of that place. Right. I don't know what kind of operation they got going there, but. Is it guarded relatively the same all hours of the day? They do guard changes, any sort of lull in security? They do guard changes, yes. Okay. Every six hours. Okay. That much I've, I've been able to see. I don't want to get in there myself, see, because I'm worried that maybe Morley and his guys saw me tailing them, so I don't want to give it away. But they don't know you guys. I mean, you're all the way down here in Coleridge. Right. So there's a couple ways we could approach this. First things first, we need to scout the place. I can do that. I know you can do that. I know you. Ghost Veil, I can get inside when they do the handoff. When the sergeant walks in, slipping right behind him. Right. Scout out the interior, get any sort of uh, vaults, like he was saying. Anything in particular, yeah. layout to the floors. That's the thing. Unless. If you do that, you're in there alone. If yeah, you, they don't know I'm in there, though. We also don't know if they have anything to detect you. If I think. It's very well defended. Right. Before we do that, I think we see. Any buildings nearby, taller buildings, <coughs> case the place. Get a whole top <coughs> view, everything we can get, everything we can see. We'll get contacts, find out everything we know about these people. We're probably going to have to go more towards the docks for this, because I doubt people who are here in Coleridge are going to know the docks there. So if we have any contacts pushing that way, that might be, t and maybe it's time to call in some favors. Got a connection with a noble, see if you can go, go to some archive building, anything like that, pull up a record, see who bought, rents it, rents it, owns it, however that works. I'm pretty good friends with a very well-known architect. I can see if I can get blueprints on the building. I think this is all important stuff to pull. Now, once we know this kind of stuff, then we could talk about how to hit it. Right. I got some ideas, and you know, our crew is pretty small, yeah. but I thought, you know, maybe depending on what's going on in there, some kind of distraction thing. The problem is, is also how to get it out. I mean, even if we can get in there and get the stuff, how do we get it out? And better yet, can we get it out without anybody even knowing? Right. Now, I can help you guys because we got a small space in the dock district. It's about a block away, but it's got a pretty decent line of sight on the, the Red House. So if you guys want to come, I could show you, and then uh, maybe you could do what you were talking about. Yeah, I think that's a good move. Get mm. started from there. He says, all right, tomorrow? Tomorrow. He tells you where to go. He gives you the description of their building. And he says he'll meet you there tomorrow morning. He says, uh, get there by 10 a.m. He goes, because there's a drop at 11 a.m. Okay. So, Chance stands up, politely bows. You ask a word him out. All right, so you have about a day before you meet up with him at his warehouse. What do you guys want to do prep-wise? for phase one here. This is where we're kind of talking about your plan. What's the plan? <clears throat> I want to talk to my noble friend. Okay. Rosalind Kellis, see if she can get into some archive, figure out who owns the building or whatever, and whatever gang affiliation they might have. Okay. I want you to make a sway roll. Sway. Two. Just two. Just two. 
Roslyn um, said that she will check on this. She gets back to you um, by way of a messenger four hours later, saying that she's unable to find the records of ownership on that building. Max, hmm. what are you doing? Um, I mean, I guess I can like just uh, find like a vantage point, maybe scout out the area just a little bit. Nothing too. So the day suspicious. before you guys, you you want to kind of go there? Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Make a prowl roll. Prowl roll. Okay. Four. You have one dot in prowl. I have one dot in prowl. How do you even kill things? <laughs> oh, that's hunt. Yeah, you, have, you have dots yeah. and hunt. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's <laughs> yeah, fine. So you you kind of scout it out. You know, mid afternoon. It's it looks like a very busy kind of congested space. Like this is just a microcosm of this one little sliver of the docks district. Mm. But basically, that building on the far side of the table is what you are pretty sure is what Chance was talking about, and that's what he identified as the Red House. You kind of make your way over to this building, which is a two-story um, inn, and you're able to kind of like, you know, move around a little bit. You could see that from here to there is probably too far for you to do any sniper work, but if you could get into either of these buildings and get up on the roof or through a window, you could probably do that kind of work. Okay. All right, what are you doing? Uh, I'd like to try to set up a meeting with a lamp black officer, lieutenant, or whatnot to see if he or any other of his underlings have gone inside to the red house. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you choose between sway or finesse. Oh. Finesse. Okay. Two. The lamp blacks tell you that they don't do anything in that specific part of the docks district. They say there's too much heat, okay. too too many blue coats. He tells you that he knows that there are other crews that that work in the docks district, but even those crews kind of avoid that specific area that you were mentioning. Okay. Shannon. I was thinking maybe I can hit up my recently acquired friends of the gondoliers, see if they know any information about what this warehouse could be. Ooh. Ah. Uh, I'll let you choose finesse or sway. Uh. Better at sway, so we'll do that. That's a five. Okay, so the gondoliers are like, hey buddy, uh, Alex, so um, we don't mess around with anything north of um, North Street, which is in this sliver that you're talking about. He says that uh, that's, that's kind of a dangerous spot for crews to work because not only do the blue coats patrol it, but rumor has it that there's a lot of imperial offices that operate there. Um, so be real careful. Like, we don't work the canals there. Too hot. Thanks Just for Just saying. You know, the docks district, a lot of commerce going in and out of that area. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Imperial operatives might be in that area, so just be real careful, buddy. All right, thank you. James. Imperials, oh boy. <laughs> um, who do I know? Tavern owner. Ugh, that's probably like, in Coleridge. That's not going to be helpful. Um. Ooh, wow. The Wongs don't like us, right? Plus one. We actually we plus one. Uh, you have a plus one. We, we did a job. That place? But no. then we but then we did a job for them. We uh, improved That's right. relations. That's yes. right. Where's that chair guy? Where did he go? The chair Mr. demon. Chair? Yeah. Mr. Chair. You haven't heard from Mr. Chair in months. Huh. Okay. 
not good. That's going to come back at some point. <laughs> yeah. It will. Um, wait, did, <laughs> yeah. did, uh, it'll come back next session. Did we give chance to demon chair? <laughs> no. No. Why are we? What? Why not? It's funny if we have guests. We should put him. No. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. You know, I, I'll just go to the tavern owner. I know Clyra. Might as well see if I can pull anything. Anything she's heard. So you're not going to the docks district to, to chat people up? You're just going to stay in Coleridge? It's fine. It just makes you. It makes it less likely. Like, you would need to roll a six to get any useful information. <clears throat> um, how about this? I'll ask Clyra if she knows any more established taverns over in the docks okay. that possibly she knows the owners of. She does. Wonderful. She tells you that there is a an inn in the docks. It's pretty reputable, and it's mostly for... It's mostly for, like, officers, like naval officers who are in, uh, like, on shore leave, right. who can afford to stay there. Um, but it's called the Thirsty Trout. The Thirsty Trout. Okay. Um, I think I'll take a little hike over there. Check that out. Okay. As you as you move north, you come down this street and you see this three-story. Tudor building with balconies on the top floor and you see a wooden sign hanging that you can't actually see because it's on their side of the table right. but and it says the thirsty trout and there's like a picture of like a trout drinking like a frothy beer <laughs> I like that um okay so find someone working front desk yeah, tavern. you go in it's it's very busy um, the first floor is kind of mostly the tavern um, and the kitchens and stuff and there are a lot of people mid-afternoon eating lunch, having drinks, that kind of stuff. You see a few naval officers who look like they're on shore leaves. They're in uniform, but they're in okay. relaxed uniform, uh, and they're you know they're at tables and stuff. There's a bar. It's quite festive. There's some people playing music. Nice. Um, I'd like to see someone about getting a room. Okay, you go up to the main desk. Um, you ask about the availability of rooms. Roll a d6. Five. You are in luck. There's actually a room on the second floor on the north end of the building. Yeah, that one. Would you like to rent that room? Yeah, I think I'll take that. Coin. You, you pay up some coin. You, you don't have to minus it off. We'll okay. do that later. I have three. You, uh, yeah. you go up the stairs, down the hall. And you open the door to a humble room, but it does have a window, and that window is facing north. And you open up the shutters, and right across the street, at the north end of the neighborhood, you see the building that you believe is the Red House. Fantastic. And as you're looking at it, you notice that, in fact, there are two men in long gray coats, like wool gray coats, standing outside of the front door with rifles, just like in broad daylight. And people are like walking to and fro, you know, on the streets, that kind of stuff, but just just standing there. Oh boy. Um, and nobody's looking, even looking at them. Like there's a woman with like a, a, a little pram and pushing like a little two year old, and even the two year old doesn't look at them. Holy shit. Um, Oof. You also notice that uh, like the windows that are open with shutters, there's like some drapes, and you see like, literally a man in each window kind of seated. Like it looks like they're kind of sitting in a chair, but you could see them seated and there's like a rifle clearly being held. This is a fortress. <laughs> How long do you stay there? Stay there looking at them through the window? Probably not much longer than like 20 seconds and acting like I'm just kind of looking around. Make a survey roll, Chan. A survey? <laughs> it's fine, believe in yourself. Five. Hey, wow. a five is a success. Um, you wait there and you're kind of nervous, so you kind of close your shutters a little bit, but just as you're about to like give up and kind of you know lock the door and go back to your, your cozy um, hideout, you, you see um, two young looking nobles. Like, you're like, wow, they are well dressed, almost as well dressed as me. <laughs> um, and they like they walk up and they're like laughing and stuff and like, like you know, kind of shoving each other. Yeah. They look like they've been, been imbibing. They, you see them walk up to the door and one of the guards like looks at them and you see them hand something to the guard and the guard takes it and then turns and unlocks the door and opens it and they go inside. 
Um, door closes. For the briefest of moment when the door opened, you saw like red light coming from in that building. Hmm. Uh, you've seen similar things before. Like when you guys were in, in the night market, uh, right. like the Wongs, like their, their brothel slash bar slash casino had, you know, these like red lanterns, like paper lanterns that covered the lights that kind of gave off sort of a warm color. Uh, but you, you saw that kind of light from inside of there. All right, so you close the shutters, lock your room, and go back? Yeah, inform everyone in the room. Fantastic. Philip. All right, so I'm going to assume that these people are not dumb and they're going to have a safe. So I'm going to spend my time, you know, gathering whatever scrap I can get so I can start making thermite, you know, bootleg it. How much do you have on the thermite clock? Uh, I finished it. <laughs> okay, but so you're, scrap for it. <laughs> you're putting together thermite. Yes. You're oh, putting boy. together a bomb to blow the safe. Got it. That's a good well, use. Well, it's not a bomb, time. but, you know. Okay. Close enough. The bomb. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the day goes by. All of you have been busy. You kind of reconvene in Coleridge at Gary's at night. Share, I'm assuming you share kind of what each of you learned. Yep. Um, give me your final discussion in 30 seconds because then we're making a roll. It's time to roll to see how this is going to go. So do we want to figure out more about what the nobles hand off to the front guard? I'm pretty sure it's, it might be similar to an invitation. Maybe this whole money. thing is like a bank where they can go grab their money. I, we can always tail one of them, attack them if necessary, That's steal whatever it is, use it to get in. I can go in there, use my ghost veil when I'm out of sight, disappear, look around. You can stay with me. Get a layout, well, reappear. Well, and then everyone, else can, room. everyone else can stay with me in the room while he's doing that scouting and figure that out from there. Find Internal out, layouts, what, cold, guard find layouts, out what those nobles handed off well, to the guards to get in. I think that's how did how many nobles were there like giving the invitation? Was it two? How it many two. handed one? Was it just one? One of them handed one. So as far as we know, you only need one of these things to get multiple people in. Correct. So yeah. So I could find one, ambush him, not kill him. <laughs> Don't want to raise that much suspicion. Just like mm -hmm. Especially on a, a noble. attack in an alley yeah. could be could be called a robbery. Could you use ghost film like pickpocket them possibly? Well, uh, I could. But we also have to get it without being detected and having a face. Tail them, leave. Tell them while yeah. they leave. Find them in a dark alley or something. Or like, he's good lure at. them somewhere. Fellas, I just want to let you all know, this will be our most dangerous mission yet to date. Fine by me. By because <laughs> we are working with Imperials here. The, the, just know, <laughs> we have play it safe. Bombs. Good that you said that. Because as I look at the engagement roll, one die gets added for a major advantage if the operation is particularly bold or daring. Um, you did get some friends and contacts to provide aid or insight. Um, there's a disadvantage if your operation plan is overly complex or contingent on many factors. So before I roll the engagement roll, narrow down what your plan's gonna be. Find what out. are you gonna propose to Chance tomorrow? I tail a noble, try and get his card. Or whatever it is. Then, that's, that's the main thing. That's the main thing. I so face, are I we talking an infiltration plan? I believe so. Probably. We get that card. I face it in as always. It inevitably goes wrong. We blow shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I mean, yeah. So well, it's a good remember, fallback. Now, I mean, you'll discuss this with Chance. Yeah, fast forward. You guys get a good night's sleep. The next morning, you head up to the docks. Yep. You meet Chance at... Uh, the building where they have some spots. He brings you in. You see a gaggle of other kids, probably five other kids, and none of them are older than Chance. They look like they're seriously between like 10 and 13 years old. They all look like straight up street kids. They're all just like dirty. Um, they're wearing like, you know, a mix of like secondhand clothes. And there's a mix of like Akarosi, Iruvian, and Scovelin kids. Amateurs. So Chance is literally the oldest kid in this crew, and he's about oh, 15. Except casualties. He says, uh, fodder. He says, all right, guys. He's like, follow me. He takes you through. He opens up some shutters at the warehouse, and you see down this alleyway and across the street, you see the red house, which you right. saw from a much closer vantage point. He says, that's it. That's the red house. There's two guards outside all the time. Every six hours, they change shifts says there's a guard in every window every single time 
He goes, I've seen people go in and out of there. I don't know what kind of operation they're running, but I mean to find out. But the only time I've seen that big stash, the drop, go in is when Sergeant Morley goes in with his guys. Right. So we've deduced that the people you see going in are, in fact, nobles. And to get in, they actually hand off a card, or we're thinking it's an invitation, to actually get inside of the building. So what we are, our plan is, is to steal one of those invitations and maybe disguise ourselves if we need to and make our way inside. Just to look around. I mean, you're not going to try to pull the heist without us, right? Like, Well, here's the issue. Because even if you got in, how are you going to get out? That's the thing. What if we treat them as our kids? <laughs> I mean, I mean, how many of them are there? Uh, how many? What's your angle? Well, we don't even know what this place is. Like, is we, this a place where kids would like stand out? I well, that's the issue. So. He says, I've never seen kids go in there. Yeah, I, I have seen not. nobles. I've seen older nobles, younger nobles, and I've seen some officers. You know, like, uh, like Navy, but I've never seen kids go in there. Okay. But I, I, I think I know what you're saying, though, because it's, it's funny, like, the people who have gone in there seem to know, like, what they're doing. Right. I don't ever see anybody, like, walk up and wait in line like they're waiting to get into a, you know, a popular tavern or something. Like, right. We need to find out what that card was. We need to get one of those. He says, well, uh, in about 20 minutes, Morley's going to be making a drop. So hang tight here and... I'll show you what I mean. So I you guys kind of wait there. I have a room across the street if that would be a better vantage point. Yes. You got a room? Yeah. In a thirsty trout? Yeah. Wow, you guys really are loaded. Yeah. <laughs> he says, oh, uh, all right. I mean, I don't know if they'll let me in there. I would just like. He, he grabs a hat from one of the other kids and he puts the hat on. And then you realize as you're looking at him that he is wearing the same clothes that he was wearing yesterday. Should be like, I, I have some, we're fine, we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. He looks fancy enough. <laughs> I make up. All right, he goes, Roger, you wait here. And like one of the kids who's maybe 12 is like, Roger okay. that. All right, so you guys walk over to the Thirsty Trout with Chance in tow. You walk in. Um, it's late morning, so there are some people there, like, you know, having early lunch. Uh, but it's not as festive as it was, you know, late afternoon when you went in there before. Um, you start walking up the stairs, presumably, because you yep. have a key in a room. You notice that the, um, actually, no. Uh, the, the front desk person just, like, looks up and nods and then goes back to his, like, bookkeeping. Perfect. Um, you go upstairs, you go down the hall. Go to your room, open the door, and there you are. Just Across not far street. from from uh, not far across, you know, across the thoroughfare, you you see the, the building. Right. And as you're waiting there, a few minutes go by, and eventually, Chance is looking out the window, he says, There, that way, to the east. He goes, That's Morley. So you guys kind of peek out the window. You see a middle-aged man, immaculately well-dressed, blue coat and uniform, yeah. with like a walking stick, but the walking stick is not like the standard like club that blue coats use. Like this looks like it was well made. And you notice that it has like a, a kind of a, some kind of fancy stone, like a, not diamond, but some kind of gemstone ball head on it. And he's kind of like strolling and you notice two really jacked dudes behind him. Um, that are also kind of walking, and both of them are carrying, like, small wooden chests. Um, they make their way down the thoroughfare. People kind of move out of the way for them. You notice this. Um, and you see when they get to the front door, there's no exchange, there's no handoff. When they get five feet away from the front door, one of the riflemen picks up his rifle. He doesn't, like, aim it at anyone, but he picks it up. And he's, like, looking both ways down the street. The other one turns, unlocks the door, and opens it. And then the three guys, Morley and the two guys, go inside, and then he closes it, locks it. And then they resume their, their guard position. Hmm. Oh. We may have to wait for a noble to come by 
then just tail him when he leaves. You see Chance reach into his back pocket, and he pulls out this like gaggle of paper with all these intricate notes. Um, and you notice that it's written in Scovlin. And he flips you and he says, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Just like clockwork. He says, next drop will be tomorrow, 6 p.m. I think that'll be, <clears throat> I think that'll be better. The darkness is great. Especially for our scouts. Oh, it's mm -hmm. always dark here. It's, well, darker. Dark, dark, way darker than what it is now. It's like early morning, <laughs> or late morning. Right. About five minutes later, the door opens. Morley walks out with the two guys, empty-handed. Walks on down the street. Chance says, okay, so you're going to go in and find out what the hell's going on in there? I think that's... And then we're all going to meet up and figure out how to get all that coin. Yeah. Well, Chance, did we tell you that uh, these might be actually Imperials as well in there? Did we tell you that? Really? Yeah. Yes. Why would Imperials be in the docks? Taxation? That's my With best that guess. Mean, we dealt <laughs> well, with why would, Imperials last Why time. would Morley be dropping coin to them? I have I mean, an inkling. Maybe he gets a little kickback. I have an inkling that either he isn't really a blue coat, blue coat, or a corrupt one. He says, "You think he's an inspector?" Ooh, oh, no that's idea. a really good point. Is he very well could be an inspector? What about that new inspector that came months back? That new one that came into town. I, f I oh. forgot his name. Yeah, no. He was a hot shot inspector. Hmm. I don't think uh, that was Morley. It was not Morley. Right. You guys have not encountered Morley. Okay. Chance says, you, you guys aren't getting cold feet. Right? No, we're going to go through with this. I'm just letting you know. One way or another, it might be a bit too in. dangerous <laughs> for your group to really do anything, seeing as how we really have no way of getting you inside as of right now. Once we know more, if there's a way we can include you that will not put you into immediate risk, we will include you. If there's a way that either you do not want to go through with it, because the number one, the sheer amount of guns that will be in that place, we will gladly pay handsomely for information. And there's then, something I should tell you. One of my kids on my crew, he's kind of spooky. He could see things, dead things. Ooh. He, he's been with me to scope out the Red House before. Mm -hmm. And he's seen dead things all over the city, but he's never seen a dead thing in the Red House or even anywhere around it. They have bands. Probably. Either that or it's maybe it's just that much that nobody ever interferes with that place that no one's gotten killed, no one's needed to. Mm -hmm. Well, someone had, to learn got... a, someone had to learn a lesson once, <laughs> so. Maybe they didn't get killed, maybe they just ran away after knowing it was too dangerous. The time we dealt with the gondoliers, the second, no, not the gondoliers, the were they? Washbucklers? The washbucklers. The second time. They, when they were corrupt, whatever that was. I know we all remember that. Mm. We had those ghost banes. Could they have a massive one? That might be what that red glow is. There's a chance, but we, we're not <coughs> quite sure what that red glow is just yet. Could be some defense system against the spirits. Could just be fancy lighting. Seeing that place, it might just be fancy lighting. Who knows? I mean, also, I don't know how like the rules work, but isn't it there's only like ghosts haunt places if the spirit wardens don't exercise it? That is correct. So that could also mean the spirit wardens just get to there very quick. Very fast. Or what if they're already in there? Even worse. <laughs> so, so 
Yeah. We need to get inside. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we just send John? We need to get inside. Yeah. Or yeah. Why don't we just send him in there? He has the ghost thing. We that's need to the, all be well, in there. That's the first. thing. But he's tail, like, tail in behind him. He can do if he can tail in tomorrow that. when they do the drop. Here's the thing. If they have something to detect him, we're not there to help. Him. Yeah. As soon as they know if he's there, we he's on his own. So that's a risk that you're putting on yourself. That's fine. <laughs> that's all you. I wouldn't force that on you if it's your decision. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. I think it's a better choice. So you're gonna try to get something so that you can get your eyes in there. Yeah. And then scope it out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He says, "All right. Sounds good." And now the engagement roll. <laughs> oh, oh that's a few dice. Huh. It's got a good poker oh. face. Oh. Oh. All right, guys, get your new player cards ready. Exceptional. Yeah, I know you're ready to lose a character. <laughs> I can go back to the notes. Okay. Or a machine. Game on. Game on. Um, All right. Chance goes back to his warehouse. You guys are in the hotel room. I'm working with Chance the Rapper. <laughs> um, half an hour goes by, and it's noon. And you notice that the two guards at the front are still standing out there when the door opens. And two other guards step out. They switch... The guards that were out there give the rifles to the two, two, two dudes coming out, and then those two guys go in. The drop tomorrow. Technically, they today. switch every six hours. So tomorrow at noon, exactly. They came out, they yeah. switched guns, and the other guys went inside. The drop will be at six. They will be there, and they will be switching weapons. If there's a time yeah. to do it, it is then. There will be too much going on in the front. They will be distracted. Yep, slip right in behind the second guy when he walks in. I think if we're going to do it, I think that's the time. There's yep. going to be, for this place, that's going to be the commotion. That's going to be the chance. Well, okay. here, there's no, like, secluded buildings next to it for Cobb to really that be is able to correct. stealth. I go, I go Beyond go. that building to the north is the, the wharf. <laughs> yeah, basically the wharf where the docks are. Yeah. And it is, as Chance estimated, about... 50 meters, or did I say 50 or 100? It was 50. 50. 50 meters to the north. What's the distance between our room and the house? Um, let's say 50 feet, 20, 20 meters. Hmm. Go ghost veil in the, in the room. Well, we're on the second floor. Keep that in mind. Maybe just around the corner. Yeah, I have no range. Um, I have no range on how far I can still, move. Like, Traffic going along there, so he just blend in. Yep, and there are people close, on the streets. Yeah. It's, I mean, this you're at midday area. right now. Yeah, so once he's close, you can just, you know. There are actually wagons full of stuff that have been offloaded from ships that are kind of going along on the streets. Yeah, so, so given the chance. Just, yeah, do it in the room, just, yeah. do it in the street. And to be clear, there is a canal, but it's like 200 meters east. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's our chance. Okay, so John, what are you doing? I will go Ghost Veil vale in the room. Describe what Ghost Veil vale does. Ghost Veil, vale. you may shift partially into the ghost field becoming shadowy and insubstantial for a few moments. For a few moments. For a few moments. Okay, so you're going outside in I normal can, mode. I can take stress to I extend don't, it. I don't think you should, personally. I think you should just do it somewhere close, but out of sight, then try and sneak in. But Wagon passes by, do it. So tell me what you're doing. You're you're outside. You're kind of on the street, hanging out. I'm going Are to. Are you just waiting for someone to come by? I'm gonna say I'm gonna wait in the second floor until we see him, until we see the uh, blue coat start to approach the door. I'll then go downstairs and then, whenever a cart passes by or a person, shift into ghost. Bed. So this is this is at 6 p.m. Yes. I the next so. night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's gonna be our best time. Okay. In the meantime. Like that same day, later on in the evening, you see a couple people come up. This time it's an older, um, well-dressed couple. And they approach, they hand something to the guards, the guards open the door. About an hour later, um, you see two naval officers. They actually Ooh. stumble out of the inn that you're staying in, walk across the street, and hand something over. A few hours go by, nine o'clock now, those same people come out. They look very inebriated. They're kind of like 
tipsy and, and sort of wobbling back and forth, but they're they're laughing and they're they're very looks like they've had a great time in there. These uh these naval officers coming back to the to yes, tavern here? They do, actually. They stumble they're they're both they look completely like Oof. hammered. Do they they're like helping each other stumble I'm across do a the street. Bit of do they walk yeah, into a room or do they stay in the tavern? They walk into the tavern right. and they kind of collapse into together. a booth along the side and they're cop, cop. they're like laughing <laughs> at each other and smiling. They order drinks. Okay. All right. Hold up here for a little bit. We're going to go see if we can do a little talking to these guys. Okay. Yeah. You go down into the tavern. Yep. By nine o'clock, it's hopping. People are just, just drinking and eating and there's music playing again. Go down, uh, get a couple drinks. Okay, and, uh, and we're, we're from where we are. Where are these naval officers? They're they're in a booth, so they're kind of across the room from you. Hmm. I don't want to approach this. That's the, that's a good question. <laughs> Music's playing loudly. I mean, they're intoxicated out of their mind. We can clearly see that. It's just the issue of how intoxicated is it? Would it be for them to even remember the conversations we'll have? Wouldn't that be better? I'm More gonna alcohol. I'm gonna slip down there with them few moments after. Okay. All right, I'll just, uh... I was thinking maybe we could approach them to challenge them to a game, mm -hmm. like, a, like a gambling sort of game, Get them and then drunk. bet for information. Is that what's gonna work? I, I like that. They're intoxicated. They probably don't have very much game sense. I got going to burn. Or just... How about free-for-all poker? We do that. Play for information. I doesn't matter who wins. Or just play and talk to them. Fair, fair. I like that. Okay. Let's do it. You guys go over to the booth. The officers kind of pull up. One of them looks up at you and he's like, uh, yes. Hey, we were just, uh, we're looking around. We're just trying to talk to people. We're just trying to get a little, get uh, some games going. Maybe play some poker. He looks at his friend and he says, make a sway roll. Make a sway roll. <laughs> All right. We're just going to do this. We're going to attack on the two stress. Push it. Ooh -hoo. Get this starting up here. Give me one more. You can take my good one. And so it begins. <laughs> five, five, three. There you go. He says, yes. <laughs> he says, move over, Charlie. And they move over. So you guys sit in the booth. And uh, the one guy says, I'm Nicola. And that's Charlie. And just know that you better have coin because we're really good at dice. We got mm. Charlie, get my coin out. Um, the first game that we're going to be playing is called Deadly Knuckles. He says, I'm going to roll these dice. And then I'm going to match them even or odd. Pony up your coin. I got an eight. Mm, go ahead. Ten. Ten. Seven. That's your coin. So he begins playing this, and he starts, as you're playing this game, like, there are more rules that keep getting added. <laughs> and then you notice that, like, at some point you feel like this is a game that he's making up. Oh you, you win a round, but then he wins a round. And then you win a round, and then he wins, like, two rounds. But progressively, you notice that, like, he keeps changing the rules. And every once in a while, Charlie will chime in and be like, no, Nicola, remember, on round seven, you have to minus one. And he's like, oh, <laughs> thank you for reminding me, sir. Uh, but as you're playing, you're able to kind of get this banter going, and you feel like you got a little rapport going with them. So just because just kind of in the middle of the game, just like, so you guys have any idea? We we're just staying here, getting a lay of the docks. What's with the that building across the street? And you see Nicola look at Charlie, and Charlie's like, Nicola says, well, uh, it's, it's a pleasure palace. Anything goes, but you have to have the right uh, credentials. OK. How do you like get one of these credentials as I'm like rolling the dice? Well, uh, sometimes it's who you know. Sometimes uh, you can buy your way in. and. Eh, sometimes it's uh, what you've done, let's say. In our case, it ain't who you know, and it's not by your way in, right, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, 
It's what we've <laughs> done. We've done some favors for some people, see? And that's how you get a chip. Hmm. Oh, you want to get in there too, huh? We do. Thinking you know, about it's, that. It's a very exclusive club. Might be able to get you guys in if you're willing to bring some coin. Uh, they, they're always looking for some, some suckers to lose some coin on games of chance. I'd say I'm we should take that bet. I got a heart of a gambler, so let's do it. <laughs> Sounds like a great time. All right. We're staying here one more night, and then we got to get on the ship. So uh, what about tomorrow night? Does that, that work for good. you? Do you have that a specific good. time or just tomorrow night? No, they're here. Uh, they're here. Yeah. We'll be here. Yeah. All right. So Charlie, we'll... let's say, uh, yeah, meet up here tomorrow. That sounds good. What's your, I didn't catch your names. I'm Nicola. This is Charlie. Brooks. Alex. 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 All right. Uh, well, bring your coin, boys, because uh, they're high rollers across the street. Got you. Sounds good to me. Nate. They nod, they grab their mugs. It is later in the evening. You guys gather back, kind of share what you know. I want to stay downstairs and keep an eye on them, wait for them to go back up to their room. Okay, you do. And being that you were rather sneaky, um, you're able to successfully kind of hang out there. You see that they finish several more rounds and then barely are able to function and get upstairs. You see that they go up to the third floor and down the hallway, kind of towards the south end of the building, and go to their room. All right, I'm going to keep a note of that. Go back to the, the our room. Okay. What were you, you, and you doing while they were all in the bar? Uh, I'd say I have a spyglass. I can just keep like eyes on the building. Excellent. Go ahead and make a hmm survey. 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 One and a four. Okay, well. They got a four. So you see more people come and go. It's nighttime. Seems to be busier. Um, and each one of the people who comes up at some point has, a, has something that they're handing to the guards. Um, the guards let them in. And it's, it's again, it's a mix. You see some, some people who are clearly nobility. Um, you don't see any more sailors, but you do see a few, um, they, they look like maybe, they kind of look, they remind you of Brooks. They look like people who are well-to-do, but not nobles. Like they're very well-dressed, but not nobles. <laughs> um, and, and again, it, some of them go in for 20 minutes and come back out. Some of them are in there for like two hours, you know, and then come back out. But you kind of get this sense that there's there's definitely a variety of different people who go in. Okay. What are you doing during this time? Still working on thermite? Probably. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> Very carefully working on thermite. What are you doing? Um, I go punch the guards. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yet. Let's see. Flint? Yes, sir. May I take a loan from you? <laughs> well, how much? How much coin do you have? I have three. May I have three coin? <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Uh, possibly explore. The Red I Room. Explore. The Red Room. Red House. Oh, that's <clears throat> How are you dressed right now? Oh. I'm assuming like that. <laughs> Is. No, do it. That do might it. be a little standout. Here. Ish. The they, they, no, let him try uh, it. Let him try it. See what happens. I mean, he has the coin. I, I mean, you guys aren't there. I'm, 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 we, no matter how bad of an idea you think this might be, <laughs> right you're not there. there. This yeah. is transpiring while you're down playing games of chance, oh, and you're watching them play games of chance. <laughs> We make her lose anything. I'll see where it goes. I'm gonna give you two coin. <laughs> okay. Okay. Deal. That's a lot of coin. That's a lot of coin. Okay. So you now have a lot of coin. What exactly would you like to do? Okay. Um, I would like to go approach the entrance 
of the Red House. Okay. We you do. You see the guards the looking. Like, there's a quizzical look at you. But they don't do anything. What is the fee for entry into this establishment? One of them looks at the other one. The other one looks back at you and he says, Sir, this, uh, this is a private club. You have to have uh, an invitation ship. Oh, I, I've... Is there any way I can achieve getting the ship by paying for it, or is it that exclusive? Are you armed, sir? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> he nods to the one guy. The guy leans his rifle up against the wall, comes over and pats you down completely. No weapons? Picks up his rifle. Looks to the other guy. The guy says, There are some rules of the club, sir. No fighting is allowed unless you've been invited by a member. Understood. You should also know that if any of the executive committee decide that they don't want you any there, there anymore, there are no refunds. I completely understand. Please wait here. He turns, he unlocks the door, and he goes inside. The one guard is still standing there just looking at you, but you notice that his eyes are kind of looking back and forth down the street. And again, both of these guys are like middle-aged men, and, but still pretty well built. You can tell mm -hmm. that they, they stay in shape. Okay. Um, the one guy that's, that goes in is gone for five minutes. He comes back <laughs> out, and he, he says... Sir, uh, you can come in. Thank you. Please follow me. He goes inside, and you enter a small foyer. This is like an eight foot by eight foot room. Mm -hmm. There's a door, an interior door, and you see that it, there's red light. Mm -hmm. You also notice that there's like a little window with like a mesh, like a, an iron mesh. And there's like an older woman sitting inside of a little office, and she's like looking at you. Mm -hmm. And he says, "You can pay your coin here, sir, and uh, and then you will be let in." Okay, it costs one coin. Yes. Okay. He he closes the door behind him, goes back outside. The woman in the cage looks at you, and she's like, "Coin, sir." <laughs> you you count out a stack, and she takes it all brings it inside of her little cage, sets it aside on this counter where she's counting up stuff. And she, you notice, mm, do you notice? Yeah, do you? <laughs> do you notice? Find out if he does. Make yes. a survey roll, champ. <laughs> gorilla of a man. <laughs> a survey? Yeah. <laughs> well, I have minus two. <laughs> He's got zero. I have, I have disadvantage. I have oh. zero. You, would you like to burn stress, or would you like to just take a <laughs> chance? Well, take a you, chance. There you go. Brave, brave skull one. Two. Hey, a two. All right. You notice that there's a lot of coin on this, <laughs> on this counting that she's doing behind the counter through this mesh, iron mesh window. She sets your coins <laughs> next to that, and she's got a ledger book, and she says, uh, that door, sir. And you notice she pulls on this little rope, and you hear like a bell, probably from like on the other side of the door. Okay. And a moment later, the door opens up. Um, which it opens up, there's another one of these guys in the gray jackets. Mm -hmm. um, and he opens the door and he looks at you and he says, come in, sir. You hear music playing, first of all. And the music is, is uh, sounds like maybe a Ruvian music. It's very like rhythmic and there's like a lot of exotic like flutes and strings that are playing. Mm. Um, and you see that inside of this area, um, the light is not red, in fact. It's actually like a very dim blue light. Like you see these little paper lanterns with candles that have like blue paper around them. So it's just these little spots of like soft blue light all over the room. There's also clouds of smoke, different kinds of smells coming through. Um, and you see that like the, the interior of this large parlor 
has like a bunch of small kind of seating arrangements, like booths with like beads for privacy. You see some open like couches and settees and chairs. All of the upholstery, like everything in here is immaculate, like the highest class of furnishing and decor that you've ever seen. There are paintings on the wall of like these scenes of like, that you've never even seen before. It looks like a fantasy almost. Okay. Um, there are about 30 people in there. All of them um, are dressed to like to the tops, right? Like the noble people in there, the well-dressed street people in there. There are tables where people are playing card games and dice games. There's, like I said, like a group of like nine musicians playing music in the corner on this kind of stage riser area. Um, there's a bar with like a number of, of chairs and like top shelf bottles of liquor. Um, you don't see anybody eating, curiously, but you do see almost everyone drinking, smoking pipes. Um, there's like a, there's one area that's got like a bunch of pillows with like a hookah in the middle and people are all taking drags off of these tubes from the hookah. Um, and it just seems like the most plush kind of gathering that you've ever seen. Okay. Very out of place. Um, you notice that there are a few people um, who seem to be employees and all of them are wearing traditional Eruvian garb. Like, kind of like what you saw people wearing in the Wong's place. Like, uh, very colorful kind of like scarves and like billowing kind of silky clothing. And it's very warm in this room too, despite the weather outside. It's very, it, it seems very warm. Okay. Um, they, the employees seem to be going from table to table, bringing like trays of drinks and in some cases like pouches with different powders and, you know, um, pipes and stuff. And you see people like picking things up and engaging in their vices. Um, you do see that there is a door uh, behind the bar, there's one of the gray coat guys standing by that door with a rifle, just like outside. He seems to be the only like guard that you see in the room. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> from the door I entered through, is there another door that would I, that would look like it leads to the to the area that the lady was in? Um. Yes, there's a small door from what you assume to be her office into the main room. Is it guarded? Is it have? Is it it's a special door? Okay. You didn't even see a keyhole for a lock. There's just a handle on it. Okay. That's good to know. Um, w could I, Demon, would ask for a server employee Try to get Within moments of like looking around and raising your hand, um, an Aruvian woman comes over to you and she's like, Good evening, sir. How can I help you? Good evening. What's your pleasure? I wish to gamble. Oh, uh, we have many games of chance, so please follow me. And she leads you kind of over to the far side of the parlor. There are about six tables set up with different games of chance. You notice some of them are dice games, some are card games. Then you see a weird game that's going on like kind of in the back and you notice that there's a gray coat guy standing next to that table. He doesn't have a rifle, but he has two pistols on his hip. Um, and you notice that he is just watching everyone else. And she begins kind of showing you the different like card games and dice games, but she concludes her tour and does not mention anything about the game with the four people in the corner. Okay. The four people that you see at that table are, um, it looks like there's an Aruvian man. Um, it looks like there are three Akarosi people. And then you, you're pretty sure that the last person's a Scovelin because he's very, you know, large, very well built and has like uh, kind of longer blonde hair. But he is wearing like immaculate garb, like uh, more in the style of the modern Akarosi nobility. Okay. So, um, the pieces that you see on that table are bones. Like, you're like, these aren't dice, they're bones. They're like each, in front of each person is like a small pile of bones. 
and then there's like bones in the middle. And there's like a, a dealer at the table who is like gesturing to people and you see they put coin in front of their pile of bones. Okay. And then you see the dealer just stand and stare and everybody stops and just no one moves. They're not staring at you. They're just staring at each other. Would I, could I try with my very much lack of skill in attuning, try to discern if they're trying anything? You could. In that regard, I'm yes. gonna push myself. Take on the stress so you can roll a die. <laughs> Six. Oh, but it was oh. so worth it. Jesus that Christ. was a valuable push. All right. In this weird environment, with all this different smoke and flavor in the air, and the music in the air, you kind of like lose yourself in this trance, and you kind of like let your eyes just relax, and you kind of look at that table in the corner, and that's when you see that there's something else at that table. You didn't see someone else before, but there's somebody standing behind one of the players across from the dealer and he's just standing and staring, and you're pretty sure that he doesn't exist in the physical plane. Okay. He looks like a extremely well-dressed noble of Akarosi descent. However, like the clothes that you see him wearing don't look like what the modern nobles look like. It looks like when you've gone to like public buildings and the library and the museum and you've seen like famous people of history. Yeah. It looks like what the nobles wore like a hundred years ago. Okay. And he's he's like standing and staring and he has his hands on the shoulder shoulders of the like normal Akarosi person who's seated at the table. And and you see him like lean down and whisper in the ear of that person. And you see that the the, the the person sitting there doesn't do anything. He just kind of blinks. So the the one that the ghost just whispered to was the dealer, or no? Okay. Guy sitting across from the dealer. And then you notice a moment later that everybody grabs a bone and puts it into the pile in front of them, and the guy that the ghost whispered to takes his entire pile of bones and just goes all in, and then like leans back like this. And you see, like, nervousness from everybody else at the table. And, like, so, he, one guy is, like, and just throws up his hands. The dealer takes his pile, puts it in the middle. Another person nods and puts their pile in. So this Akarosi ghost is only assisting the Akarosi that is across from the dealer, from what I can tell. That's what it would seem to be like. Okay, I believe I have an idea. <clears throat> You, you see that this game comes to a head and one person goes all in against the Akarosi with the ghost friend. And the dealer pulls out a set of cards, but the cards aren't like normal playing cards. And he lays out this pattern with the cards and the cards have like pictures on them. And then the last cards that he places is the sign of, of like, it's like a skull and crossbones. And he places that card last and it is in a position aiming at the guy who went all in. And everybody at the table's like, oh. and the dealer takes all of the bones and moves them in front of the Akarosi guy. Okay. So clearly he has won this game, although you're not really familiar with the rules. So I'd like to approach the dealer. As you start walking over there, the Arubian girl's like, um, sir, no. No, 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 sir. That's the executive table. I'm sorry. You okay. can't go over there. I apologize. You can join any of these other five tables of gaming. Okay, I appreciate. Um, okay. Suppose I'll just go play a game of chance away from the executive. Okay, you do. Um, dice or cards? Dice. Okay. You go up to the dice tables. Um, they, they move over a little bit for you to get in. The dealer mentions for you to ante in, so you put some coin in, you start playing games. Go ahead and roll 2d6. Ten. 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 The odds are ever in your favor. You're, yes. you're doing very well. You're kind of like on a decent winning streak. Some people leave, some people 
stay, new person comes up kind of thing. Um, for a moment though, like it's very exciting. Like people are like noticing from other tables and stuff and they kind of come over and watch the game as you're playing it. You do pretty well. You basically make up for the coin that you spent to get in here. Okay. Um, this takes like an hour. At a certain point, um, like at many points, the Aruvian girls come up to you and, and, and been like, is there anything else I can get you, sir? Any pleasures that you would like? No, thank you. Very well. Um, at 11.30 p.m., um, the, the band stops playing music and they begin packing up their stuff. And you notice that everybody else like looks around and you notice that the blue lights get a little brighter. Mm -hmm. You're like, how did that happen? Because there are candles still, but they're a little brighter. And you notice that people begin kind of like squaring up at their games, finishing their drinks. Some people don't even finish their drinks. They just like leave them. Can I ask the people at the table who I was playing the game with for an hour, what is happening? Oh, it's closing time, sir. Like the dealer says, he's like, it's closing time. Sir. Okay, okay. Here. We hope to see you again. Thank you. I had very much fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very pleased. I don't acarose you well. You you see that um, everybody in short order begins to kind of leave on their own. The staff are all very polite. They kind of escort people who need help walking because they're too high or drunk. Bef before that, uh, did I any chance make like have a good talk with any of the other players at the table? Yes, sure. <laughs> I'll say that you met five different people throughout the night. Um, two of them were just basically wealthy merchants, like who have, they're, they're business people. Uh, one of them was an, a younger, like 20 something noble girl mm -hmm. who just likes to kind of have fun, you know, partying and having fun. And she mentioned a few times that her parents would probably kill her if they ever found out she was here. And then she like laughed about it. Um, and then a couple older, like middle-aged nobles um, who were kind of just, you know, these older men who looked like the coin meant nothing to them. Like they were just, you know, they would lose and they had no reaction. They'd just like laugh and then they'd have more to drink. Okay. Uh, while the game was occurring, I would have liked to ask a question if to them, would you, would you, people be able to give me the card necessary to enter this place without paying the fee or would I require someone else of a higher standing in this establishment? So you're asking the other players? Yes. Hmm, this is time for a sway roll. Let's see how socially awkward this is. <laughs> I um so how chip push, uh, push myself can again. Can have chip for come again no pay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can get three. put on oh, that was that was a fall out of your hand. Okay, that doesn't roll. count. Come on, please. I will permit you to actually roll that. Oh, it's in it's the alley. Six. It's a six, six in the alley. <laughs> okay. Ooh. You are so lucky. All right, pick your pick your preferred person: <laughs> business person, young hot noble girl, or middle aged noble dudes. It, it's quite obvious. The All right, young hot noble girl. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's like she's like so. Uh, to get the chip, you'll eventually have to be invited. She's like, I'm sure you paid your way in, and that's fine, but like the executive council has to like vet you and get to know you and then give you the invitation. Okay. She's like, but you know, you maybe keep coming and once they get to know you, they'll they'll give you the chip. Okay, so it is keep attending this establishment and I will have a chance uh, receiving the card from the executive council. Yes, and she like looks over her shoulder towards that table in the corner. She's yeah. like, um, they're very, very wealthy and powerful. Okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Of course. I hope to see you tomorrow. Of course. <laughs> so okay. you leave along with everybody else. I'm gonna say that it's by the time all of your different shenanigans have happened, it's midnight. You're in the room in the hotel. You guys have gathered a lot of information, right? 
But do you have enough information to make a plan? That is the real question. And we will find out the answer to that question. Peace out. Bye. Welcome no, to you. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true. I was like, yeah, this is going off great. It's going to be perfect. Hello and welcome back. Oh, to your camera turned off. You oh. son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's go around the table and introduce you everybody. Start over. <laughs> See, now you f up my flow, Karafa.